Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to do something just a little bit different from what you might be used to from Heat. You read that title correctly. This is, in fact, a lick video. And no, that's not a trick. I'm actually going to teach you guys five complete licks that you can learn and then just slot in over a 2-5-1 progression in a major key. Specifically, I'll show them to you in the key of C. But as is my mantra here on this channel, you should always practice this in all 12 keys and in all chord qualities. However, this isn't just any old YouTube guitar lick tutorial. This is DSG Studio. And so we have to do things a little bit more in depth around here. I'll take you through each lick at a typical bebop tempo, and then again slow down so you can follow along with the notation of the tabs down at the bottom of the screen, sure. But then I'm gonna walk you through a quick analysis of my thought process while playing these and how you could use this kind of material organically in your own improvisation. Let's get started. Before we do any playing, I should make something just a little bit clearer. When I say long 2-5, I really just mean that each chord, the 2 and the 5, both receive one bar. For these examples, the one chord will also get a single bar, but that could change in the wild, so be aware. These licks really just present a complete phrase getting from what essentially is dominant resolving back home to the tonic. One last thing. For all these licks, I'm not actually considering the 2 chord at all. The two chord is really just a suspension of the dominant, so we can play all of our dominant stuff over the two chord as well. This makes things simpler to conceptualize and also makes the harmonic movement of dominant to tonic that much more direct since that's literally all we're playing. Now, let's check out the first lick. For this first one, I started out on the 7th of G7 and played the diatonic arpeggio off of that note by going down like this and then pivoted to this D note. From there, I played up the chord and then resolved down to this B and then played two half steps to get down to the root of the G7. Since this note is also 5 of C major, I can play this phrase off of the 5. And that resolves super smooth to this chord tone of C, 3, on the downbeat. Once I got to the third of the C here, I jumped down to the fifth and then played a major triad up, which lands me on the ninth of the chord to end the phrase. Check it out again slowly. For this second lick, I followed a similar strategy to the first one. Started out on the fifth of the D minor seven this time though, and played the chord off that note by going down like this. That pivots to this F, which is the third of the D minor, the seventh of the G, and then I played down the G7 scale to the third. I didn't need any half steps this time to land right, so I just didn't use any. Once I got to the third of the G, I played up the chord and then pivoted to the root. Once again, this makes me end up on the 5th of the C by doing that, and when I get to the 5th of C, I know I can play this little bebop phrase, which lands me on the 3rd of the C, right up the downbeat for a super smooth resolution. Check out what that lick sounds like a little slower. For this lick, I started out on the 5th of the G7 scale this time and came down with three half steps between the 3rd, the 2nd, 2nd tonic, and the tonic and the 7th. That put me landing on the 7th of the G right on the downbeat here. From there, I played the chord off the 7th like this, then pivoted to this D note. Then I just played down the scale with no half steps and one more time came to land on the 5th of the C. 
This time I got there on the downbeat of the C major bar, but I can still play this phrase and land with the third of the C, E, on beat three, which works great. We always want chord tones to land on strong beats. That's one and three in order to make things sound right. Check out what this sounds like under tempo. For lick number four, I took a similar approach to number three in that I started on a chord tone of the G7 and came down the scale with the half steps. This time, I used the seventh of G and came down the scale all the way to the fifth and used three half steps again between three, two, two to one, and one to seven to make that harmonic math shake out correctly. When I got to the fifth, I played the chord up off that chord tone and pivoted down at the scale, which made me land on the seventh of C, which is B. From there, I just came down the scale to the third, third of C that is, so I could finish my phrase on a strong beat with a really cogent sounding chord tone. Here's what that one sounds like at a slower tempo. For this last lick, I started out on the third of the G7 this time and came down the scale with three half steps until I got to the fifth. Just like in the last lick, I then played up the chord off the fifth and pivoted down a step in the scale. That lands me on this B, and from there I did another pivot by playing the chord that happens off the third here like this. This time, that pivot lets me land on the fifth of C major right on the downbeat. Since the fifth is a super stable note, I figured I'd just end the phrase right there. Take a look at how this one works slowly. I hope you guys have found these licks and their explanations helpful. It's a really great exercise to write something like this out and then take it through all 12 keys. I, I can't stress enough though that improvisation doesn't mean that you're coming up with this stuff innately. You've got to put in the time like this in order to train your ears, brain, and your hands to work in tandem and come up with lines like this on the fly, especially at higher tempos. Try inserting your favorite of these phrases every time you play a long 2-5-1 for a bit, and you'll gradually start to feel it becoming a natural part of your jazz vocabulary. Let me know what you thought of these licks down in the comments section too. Which one was your favorite? Is there one that you found more challenging than the rest? Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications too. I've got tons of more good stuff on the way for you guys. If you really like what you see here, you can go check out my Patreon page. That's where you'll find PDFs of all the written materials for this and every other video here on the channel, as well as some really awesome bonuses for higher tier patrons. Thanks again for all your support. I'll see you guys next time.